Button Moon shines brightly in the large blanket sky. It shines down on a red cardboard box house. The roof is a scrapbook with a chimney pot made from a paint pot. Around the house there are broomstick trees and a lollipop stick fence. This is where Mr. Spoon, Mrs. Spoon and Tina Teaspoon live. They are called the Spoon family because they all have wooden spoons for arms. In the garden, standing on a carpet of grass, is their homemade spaceship. Its top has been made from a funnel. There's a baked bean tin in the middle, and at the bottom of the spaceship is a sponge pudding tin to help it to rise into blanket sky. Let's blast off with the Spoon family to Button Moon. This story is called Happy Birthday, Tina Teaspoon. Today is Tina's birthday. Mrs. Spoon is wishing Tina a happy birthday. If she gets washed and dressed quickly and comes downstairs, she might just find a present waiting for her. Tina asks if the postman has been. Mrs. Spoon hasn't seen him yet. He's a bit late. Mr. Pot, the postman, has arrived. He knows it's Tina's birthday because one of the envelopes has an orange sticker saying happy birthday. He'll give Tina a surprise. He posts the birthday cards under the door of the spaceship and creeps away. Mr. Pot doesn't even toot toot his postman. Tina's pleased with her birthday present. It's a computer game. She presses the button. Mrs. Spoon thinks everyone else must have forgotten Tina's birthday, even Granny Spoon. Mr. Spoon suggests they take off for Button Moon. When they get back, the birthday cards may be on the mat. Tina opens the spaceship door to find a pile of envelopes on the floor. What a surprise! Mr. Pot the Postman was playing a birthday game. Mrs. Spoon sees a brown envelope. It's the telephone bill. More of a shock than a surprise. Time to take off for the birthday flight to Button Moon. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off.
Tina likes watching the floating balloons. She's opened her birthday cards. Granny Spoon's card has a pretty flower on the front and a postal order inside. There's a card from Tina's uncle with a puppy on it and a card from her school friends with a picture of a clown. But there's no card from Egbert. He's forgotten. safely on Button Moon. Vacuum cleaner and small bottle are there to meet them. Hello, Tina. Happy birthday. Here's your birthday card. <coughs> Vacuum cleaner did have a birthday card for Tina, but he swallowed it. <laughs> Hello there. Tina recognises that voice. It's Queenie Jelly. <coughs> Queenie Jelly is wobbling and shaking. Because ice skating will be taking place on top of the ice cake. <laughs> it's such a wonderful cake with an ice cap mountain. The very clever ice skater is Miss Marzi Pan. <laughs> a fanfare for Marzi, please. <laughs> oh. Marzi appears, standing on top of the ice capped mountain. She slides down the mountain and twirls and twirls on the ice. Tina thinks she's very clever. cracks and Marzi falls through. Queenie Jelly is most upset. <laughs> oh dear, Marzi's fallen through the icing. <laughs> what are we going to do? Mrs. Spoon comes to the rescue and helps her out. Thank you so much, Mrs. Spoon. The next time Marzi goes ice skating, we must make sure the icing is set hard. <laughs> Jolly good! cries Queenie Jelly. Here is Jam Donuts! <laughs> uh, happy birthday, Tina. Uh, all together now. <laughs> Three cheers for Tina. <laughs> hip hip hooray! Uh, hip hip hooray! <laughs> hip hip hooray! Hooray! Rag Doll shouts across Button Moon. Spoon family can see Rag Doll doing her disco dancing. Freddy Teddy is practicing the piano. Oh, Rag Doll, I wish you'd turn down your stereo. I can't hear myself play. Toffee the clown says. It's putting me off my juggling. The sweets are going everywhere. Sorry, says Ragdoll. I'll turn the music down. And I'll sit here while you play the piano. Oh no! I've sat on a sticky toffee. I can't do my disco dancing with a box stuck to my bottom. I'll unstick you, says Freddy Teddy. Oh! There, 
It, uh, why don't we all do disco dancing? Ragdoll agrees. Mm. Everyone joins in. Even Mr. Spoon. Having a lovely birthday, she waves goodbye to the toys. Goodbye! Bye! Bye! Mrs. Spoon says that before they leave Button Moon, it's time to have a look through the telescope. They all look to see what they can find. Through the telescope, they can see Gertie and Bertie. Bertie has brought Gertie breakfast in bed. Come on, Gertie, you great big snoring lump. Time to get up. Bertie, replies Gertie. Bertie laughs. Oh, my love, why don't you wish for your fairy godmother? What a good idea, Bertie. I wish my fairy godmother was here, says Gertie. Suddenly, there's a flash and a shower of cornflakes. Fairy Mary appears. I was fast asleep in the cornflakes. Gertie says... I'm sorry, Fairy Mary. Please, may we have three wishes? All right, you can have three wishes, replies Fairy Mary. But they'll only last the day, as it's the month of May. I must fly. Bye! Fairy Mary disappears. Oh! oh. And Gertie jumps up and down with excitement. Oh! oh. oh. Whatever is that noise? <laughs> My love, it's the cornflakes, says Bertie. You're crunching them into the floor. Never mind, replies Gertie. Let's make the wish. I wish Bertie and I could be king and queen for a day. And magic works, and Bertie and Gertie are wearing cloaks and crowns. Oh, Gertie, let's ask to live in a palace. Kings and queens wouldn't want a bedroom like this. <laughs> Gertie agrees. <clears throat> My husband and I <laughs> oh. <laughs> wish to be in a palace. The magic works, and Bertie and Gertie find themselves in a palace bedroom. says Gertie. <laughs> My love, the cornflakes are in silver bowls. <laughs> Can we have breakfast? asks Bertie. <gasps> Gertie is far too excited. <coughs> then two yapping corgi dogs chase into the bedroom. <laughs> Look, Bertie, corgis. We must be in Buckingham Palace, says Gertie. Bertie shakes his head. Oh, we mustn't let them climb onto the bed. <laughs> it, it, let's go out onto the balcony. They gaze down on the traffic in the streets. Gertie says, Bertie, you can see for miles. Oh. Don't those guardsmen look smart? Bertie says, oh, Let's go back inside. It's been marvellous being king and queen for a day. Gertie agrees. 
Fairy Mary did say the magic would only last a day. Suddenly, they are back in their own bedroom. Gertie says, We had a lovely time, but there's no place like home. Oh. I wouldn't wish to live in a palace for all the tea in China. There is a flash. It's raining tea bags. Oh. <laughs> Bertie says, Oh no, we still had a third wish left. And Fairy Mary thought you wished for all the tea in China. <laughs> Never mind, replies Gertie. Go and put the kettle on. <laughs> and they both <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Mrs. Spoon puts the telescope back in the spaceship and they all get ready for the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Mr. Spoon tells Tina they're not going straight home, they're going to fly to Egbert's house. Vanilla has invited them for Tina's birthday tea. From the spaceship window, they can see the tallest block of flats. That's where Egbert lives. Mrs. Spoon presses the round button to land the spaceship in the car park. Egbert gives Tina the birthday card he's made himself. As he gives her the present he bought, he drops it on the floor. And it bounces around the room. Tina thinks it must be a ball. They all laugh. And Vanilla and Egbert wish Tina a happy birthday. Let's blast off with the Spoon family to Button Moon. This story is called The Singing Hot Pots.
Tina Teaspoon is in her bedroom, looking at the poster on the wall. The Singing Hot Pots are Tina's favorite pop group. They're giving a concert today up on Button Moon. Tina is hoping to go. Mr. Spoon is in the hallway, ringing the Button Moon Theatre box office. There are no more tickets left for the concert. Mrs. Spoon says they can still go to Button Moon. They might see something else just as exciting. Tina thinks there's nothing as exciting as the singing hot pots. Mrs. Spoon wants to cheer Tina up. She would go to the record shop to buy the singing hot pots latest record, but she has forgotten what it's called. Tina wishes her dad had bought the tickets before they were sold out. Mrs. Spoon watches as Mr. Spoon and Tina climb into the spaceship and get ready for the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! The smoke reminds Mrs. Spoon of the title of the record. It's Letting Off Steam. Mr. Spoon tells Tina not to look so miserable. Someone might give their tickets back if they can't go. They're getting closer to Button Moon. Mr. Spoon presses the round button to land. Spaceship lands safely on Button Moon. Here's Small Bottle. Hello, Mr. Spoon. Hello, Tina. I'm so happy the Singing Hot Pots are giving their concert today. I'm going to get Boiling George's autograph. I hope you've got your tickets. Mr. Spoon tells him they were too late. What a shame, says Small. Never mind. The Singing Hot Pots will be back in a year's time. Small goes back to the theatre through the stage door. Captain Large wants me to fix up the sound for the concert. Vacuum cleaner, will you help me? <coughs> Vacuum cleaner listens to the loudspeakers and Small Bottle goes over to the microphone. <coughs> testing, testing, one, two, three! <coughs> Sorry, Vacuum Cleaner, was I too loud? Yes, he was. Bubbling Brian and Steaming Steve of the Singing Hot Pots join them. Bubbling Brian says, Hello, Small. I heard you testing the sound. We're tuning up our guitars. Small Bottle comes over all shy. He doesn't know what to say. Uh, 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 I bet you go and answer the telephone. See you later. Small picks up the phone. Hello, Button Moon Theatre box office. Yes, that'll be all right. Thanks for letting us know. Goodbye. He calls to Mr. Spoon and Tina. Mop and Bucket can't come. They're staying in the cupboard tonight, so there are two tickets for you after all. Tina is delighted. Captain Large is in his dressing room. Well, vacuum cleaner, how does my bow tie look? <laughs> vacuum cleaner laughs. <laughs> Captain Large says, oh, I, I, I know it's not very straight. It's difficult to t tie a bow tie w when you're nervous. Small Bottle pops his head round the door. 
Captain, it's time to start the concert. Hurry up, get on stage. Mr. Spoon and Tina take their seats for the Singing Hot Pots concert. Tina's pleased they managed to get the two spare tickets. She waves to Freddy Teddy and Rag Doll, who are in one of the theater boxes. The safety curtain goes up, and Captain Large walks nervously onto the stage. <coughs> he says, uh, uh, Welcome to the Button Moon Theater. Uh, the singing hot pots will now sing their latest hit called, um... Letting off steam! Shouts Small. <whistles> the captain's bow tie spins, and the audience scream with laughter as the curtain rises. We're a set of saucepans. Sitting on the shelves, ready to be heated up. We do enjoy ourselves. When someone puts us on the stove, they think it's a scandal. If we should burn their fingers, we get too hot to handle. It's true. Hop on, make a sizzle in the gym. Hop on, always start so steam. Hop on, yeah. Hottest of the hot pots, a hot drop called hot drop. Oh, get in! And I'm bubbling, Brian. And just take me in stage, we do a terrific job. And I'm little boiling George. I let my gut down. I often flip my lid, wee, and never simmer down. <laughs> hot pot, Mrs. Sizzling Tim. Hot pot, always lots of steam. Small lets down the curtain and the concert is over. Tina and Mr. Spoon thank Small for the tickets. They ask him if he would like to look through the telescope with them. He says, Yes, please. I wonder what we're going to see. Through the telescope, they can see Jungle Mouse fast asleep in his watermelon hammock. It's cool now in the early morning, but by midday, the sun is scorching hot. <laughs> Monkey is swinging through the trees complaining that the jungle is too hot. Lion was out in the rain last night. He got very wet. He's pleased that his fur is dry now, but he wishes it wasn't so hot. Little jungle mouse's throat is so dry, he's drinking some water out of a flower. Water that the sun hasn't dried up yet. Hippo is more grumpy than usual. She likes the sun, but today it's just too hot. Monkey has an idea. 
Why don't they all wear sun hats? <laughs> they could each make a hat with a very large brim to keep the sun off. <laughs> Hippo thinks it's a very silly idea. But Jungle Mouse thinks it's a very good idea. <laughs> Hippo agrees to give it a try. <laughs> so does Lion. <laughs> but as he is king of the jungle, he is going to wear a crown. <laughs> They all go off to make hats for themselves. Uh. Hippo has made her hat of reeds from the river bank. She plunges into the water, and her hat floats away down the river. <laughs> Monkey finds that very funny. He's made his hat from a banana skin. The trouble is, when Monkey jumps around, he loses his hat too. <laughs> Hippo tells Monkey not to laugh at others when he's just as funny himself. <laughs> Lion is pleased he made a crown of leaves. Now he really does look like the king of the jungle. <laughs> jungle Mouse is wearing a hat made from a flower. It certainly smells very nice. The parrot squawks. She tells everyone in the jungle that if they want to keep really cool, they should stay in the shade of the trees. The animals think that's the best idea they've heard today. <laughs> Jungle Mouse is going to curl up for a sleep underneath a large leaf, out of the hot afternoon sun. But he's not going to take his hat off, because it looks so nice. Mr. Spoon says it's time to leave for home. They climb into the spaceship. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off. The spaceship lifts off into blanket sky. see burgers whizzing past the spaceship window. Tina says, that must be called fast food. Mr. Spoon laughs. They're getting closer to home. Singing hot pots were great. Mrs. Spoon has given her the record, but if Tina plays it too loud, Mrs. Spoon will be letting off steam. The heat is getting too much. Careful not to judge. The heart is showing time. Be
Button, button, button.